Go for it, man. Be number one, Nathan. You're the man. If the Bible was being written today, I think One Hope and Jim Bai would be in the gospel. If you hear the stories, you know that God is still at work writing, writing the next chapter. Jim and I met at North Central Bible College. Right from graduation, we went right overseas. So our first anniversary, second and third anniversary were in Ivory Coast, where we were sent to plant a church in the town of Sakasu. We came back to the States knowing that we didn't have a big, wide base to raise our funds. So that led us to Lincoln, Nebraska. And um, from there, we decided to go to Benin. My childhood was primarily spent in West Africa. I grew up from about two to 16 in, in West Africa in a very international and very diverse context. I think as a kid, you find out what's important by watching your parents, their heart for the lost, for the unreached, and then also their willingness to cross seas and cross culture to reach people formed me as a, as a minister and a person. My dad, he would say something quite often that sharing the gospel is probably one of the most compassionate things you can, you can offer someone. He believed everybody needed to have a chance to hear the gospel and wanted to ensure that was happening. I had heard more than one person mention one of Jim's nicknames as a bulldozer. He knew that when God had called him uh, to do something or go someplace, that God's protective sovereign covering was over him and there was nothing that was gonna to happen to him outside of God's permissive plan. You know, I think um, the partnership between One Hope and Jim's vision, it just worked together just so perfectly. We started with the Book of Hope, um, the Livre de Vie in French, and we used that in all our outreaches. And then we went into the God Man and the 17 stories. He had a great team in every country that he worked in, and he poured into them. And then, you know, using the One Hope materials, equipping them. Jim's passion was, yes, let's evangelize. That's great, and we need to do that. But we need things like the 17 stories, and we need to follow up to have these new believers mature in the faith. And that's when the National Brethren and Jim came up with the Lumiere Project. The Lumia Project um, started with a desire to see areas opened up with the gospel and churches planted. My dad got so excited about the Lumiere Project because his heart was to reach the lost. He would state the verse, it's always been my ambition to preach the gospel where it's um, not been preached before. My dad was excited about, his team bought into, and has outgrown his original vision. I remember getting a phone call from one of my sisters and she was crying on the phone and was saying, hey, um, you need to come to the hospital. Dad's had a heart attack. Jim's passing was totally unexpected. It hurts. There are times I sit in the kitchen floor and just weep and cry. But in all of that, I have seen the faithfulness of God. I felt like my dad and I were cut from the same cloth. My dad is someone I still miss and I can see the redemptive element of it in my own life. Using that grief, um, ministering out of that to others has been redemptive. And as I've taken uh, seven more trips to Benin with teams uh, since Jim passed away, um, been able to observe um, and see how they have just multiplied what Jim invested in them. When you think of Lumiere, some people said it couldn't have been done and it has been done. Lumiro um, was a success. We want to continue to honor the legacy and service of Jim and Christy and their passion for reaching the unreached. That's why we have created the Jim and Christy Buy Fund to support the development and distribution of scripture engagement programs for young people and church planting efforts around the world. It will focus on getting the gospel message to the unreached, the people who make up the final third of the global population yet to receive the good news. 
We found that evangelism and church planning are keys to sharing the good news in places where there are few or no Christians. One of the initiatives the fund will propel is the Lumiere Project, which continues today. It was Jim's passion project to plant churches and see unreached communities in Africa experience Christ. This fund will also support the translation and distribution of children's scripture engagement programs in minority languages. Programs to be used include God's Big Story, a program for children where they learn Bible stories from fun picture cards, the God Man film, which is an animated film of the life of Jesus, and the children's animated edition Book of Hope, which shares about the life of Jesus. These are the primary programs we envision funding for translation and adaptation, and others will be added as needed. I invite you to consider honoring the legacy and service of Jim and Christy by participating in this fund opportunity.